Well, several people are being investigated and questioned about the murder of three young women in Kailicha. The women were shot in the head on Monday night. And while no arrests have yet been made, Western Cape Police say officials are working to ensure that those responsible for the crime are punished. As part of the 72-hour activation plan, our detectives are following up several leads. They are hard at work. At this point, we can't divulge much. Suffice to indicate that they are interviewing several people and pursuing some leads that have come to the fore. In the month of September, we have had in the Western Cape several multiple murders. But I must say that Kylie Cha, for the month of September, this is the first one. You would recall that um, in the past week, we had about four, ma four, four murders that occurred on the Millerton side of Cape Town, and that incident was taxi-related. And the week before that, on the 18th of September, that uh, another multiple, a case of multiple murders occurred in, in, in Crossroads in Nyanga. I must indicate that what we find as a relief with last Wednesday's shooting in Milmati is that we made an arrest. And uh, the 41-year-old who was arrested yesterday appeared at the Cape Town Magistrate Court today. And we're hoping that even with this particular case, we should be able to make, to make a, a breakthrough. Staying with that story, we ask if there's a link between apartheid-era spatial planning in Kailicha and the police's inability to fight crime in the area. To help answer this, we're joined now by Kensani Mutileni from the Social Justice Coalition. She's also a human rights attorney and researcher. Kensani, thanks a lot for joining us. We know that the location and the current setup of Kailicha is a legacy of apartheid uh, spatial planning. Is that a cause for the ineffective policing we're seeing in the area? Morning, Takuma. Um, so, yes, you could say that, um, considering that when Kailicha was first established, it was just merely as a temporary setup. But then through the years um, and into the democracy, um, with people growing um, and wanting to live in the inner city or have access to economic opportunities, people have then um, lived in informal settlements and it has grown since. So you could understand that there could be some capacity reasons and also considering that the right to adequate housing is one that one can realize progressively, right? So it's not something that you will get immediately. So obviously due to the delay in um, having access to housing is making could be a pointer to say that people are actually occupying um in informal settlements and therefore there's no capacity um so i mean it's quite interesting that um there was an article where the western cape um SAFs actually said that they don't have capacity due to the growing number of people in informal settlements and they then cited the new informal settlements that were established during the COVID 19 pandemic right but um there's just some there's no truth to it considering that as the Social Justice Coalition, we've been calling for allocation of adequate police resources in informal settlements and in poor black communities. Uh, almost three decades since the end of apartheid. What, what should have been done? Should, should anything have been done differently during that time to make sure we didn't end up here? Well... <laughs> That's quite a difficult question to actually answer, but definitely things could have been done differently. A lot could have been revised because even when the Social Justice Coalition took the Minister of Police to the Equality Court in 2016, um, we used a document um, that has always been there, you know, a document that has always been used with regards to um, allocation of um, personnel, police personnel um, in South Africa. And that is what we actually challenged in the Equality Court to say that According to the document, um, the allocation of police resources, this includes police vans, actual police staff, um, actual detectives, is actually not adequate and does not reflect um, the numbers of people currently living in informal settlements. So something should have been done, but nothing is being done because they're still following the old um, policies. And even when you challenge these policies, the minister is always happy to oppose the applications. So Kailicha in its current location, very far from the prime urban district. Moving forward, helping the people of Kailicha, is that about moving them closer to one prime urban district or is it about investing 
in the current infrastructure in Kailicha and improving that so that we don't just have one urban prime district? Well, um, the, the Social Justice Coalition um, has a campaign on the upgrading of informal settlements as a start, as a temporary solution, right? So while the government gets themselves in order and finalizes their plans, it's important for them to have an interim plan, right? So what does this interim plan look like? The interim plan could look like service delivery, ensuring that people have water and sanitation, people have access to policing, and actual vis visible policing. And I think the most important thing to mention about informal settlements is that they don't have visible policing. There is no relationship between SAPS members and um, the residents of, 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 of Kailicha and other neighboring informal settlements. And to say the least, I mean, there's only about three police stations. And since the Kailicha of Commission inquiry, um, Kato Regan had made a recommendation that they have to build an additional police station in Makaza. And to date, that police station is still not being built. That land that was earmarked for the police station still remains vacant. So so those are the issues and, and, and campaigns that we're trying to do our work around to say that, okay, we understand that you guys are complaining about resources as the South African government or the provincial government, but then how do we then upgrade informal settlements to ensure that they that people living in informal settlement actually live in humane conditions, that they have access to transport, they have access to service delivery? One of the issues is the influx of people into urban areas from rural areas. They're looking for economic opportunities. And as long as that's happening, we're always going to be playing catch up when it comes to service delivery. There's more and more people. So how, how do we solve that? It's quite a difficult one. I think this is something that requires all stakeholders. This requires civil society. It requires national and provincial governments to sit together and actually come up with a plan. But at this point, we seemingly working um, we're working in silos because then as much as we're trying to hold um, the South African government accountable and the provincial government accountable um, for the non-action or the non-implementation of their policies, their laws, um, it then it becomes problematic because now it looks like we are then fighting against each other. But at the end of the day, we have one common goal, and that goal is to ensure that people in South Africa live in an environment that is free and safe. Right. So 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 maybe it's high time that we all sit together, put our heads together. And I mean, with the escalating um, unemployment, unemployment rates in South Africa, that's also something that's also very alarming. Right. So I think there's so much that actually has to be addressed yeah. prior to actually addressing um, the housing issue. So there's just so much that um, has to be spoken about. It requires different departments to sit together, not just the policing department. Mm -hmm. It requires human, human settlements. It requires public works because they have access to the land. Yeah. Um, it requires the city of Cape Town. The West Cape. It requires a whole lot of people. So, and I mean, as civil society, we've done research. We are willing to sit with the South African government to present our research to say, okay, then this is what we have. And these, these are what the people on the ground are saying. How do we then work a plan working forward? Yeah. Because now it just seems like it's just a touch up um, all the time. Well, Kentani, there's, uh, there's a lot of work to do. And I hope, like you're saying, uh, we stop this issue of people working in silos. Kentani, thank you so much for your time. That was the Social Justice Coalition's Kentani Mutileni.